This is a story of the price of love. It is a tale of the Fianna, the guardians of Ireland. Specifically, it is a tale of Oisin, son of Finn McCool, their chieftain. Oisin's tales and poems of the Fians have come down to us remarkably preserved. This is the story of how that came to pass. It was a misty summer morning on the shores of Loch Lean when a strikingly beautiful young woman appeared to Oisin and Finn and their companions. She was dressed like a queen, riding a white steed with golden shoes on its hoofs. Hail, Finn, son of cool, she said. I have traveled over the waves to find you. I am Neve of the Golden Hair, daughter to the king of Tiernanog, the land of youth. What drew me here is the love of your son, Oshin, whose words and deeds have won him fame in my land. She turns to the <coughs> other man with blue eyes shining. Will you go with me, heroic Oshin, to my father's land? There you would wear the royal crown of the king of youth and live with me in love and plenty forever, never knowing age, sickness, or sorrow. Oshin said to her, Every word you speak binds me as a spell well made. My heart is yours to the world's end. He mounted the fairy steed and held Neve in his arms. The horse gave a mighty bound, carrying his riders out over the sea. They traveled for how long she could not say, through strange sights and terrifying storms, until they arrived at a mysterious shore. The steed led them to a magnificent palace where dwelt the king of Tirnanog. Welcome, Oshin, son of Finn, to the land of youth. Here, in the heart of myths, we have life eternal and joy in abundance. But there are no bards among our race. We yearn for new songs from the greatest poet of the realm of men. And so they were wed, and Oshin passed what felt like no more than a year in bliss and contentment. Yet he never touched his heart or created poetry. For each moment he lived was a perfection beyond compare, <coughs> and no one thing could surprise or inspire him to set apart from anything else. One day, Oshin said to Neve, My love, I long to see Ireland once more. I wish to visit with my father, and my friends, and tell them of my life here in the land of youth. But for the first time since he met her, he saw his wife's face turn pale. I would never hinder you, husband, from your heart's desire. But with your words, I feel in my bones a sudden chill. Is this what your people call fear? There is no need for fear, he reassured her. Your steed can take me safely there and back. I'll be gone hardly any time at all. Then promise me this. While you are in the world of age and death, you must never alight from your horse. If you should touch mortal ground, you are lost to me and may never return. Promise me, love. No matter what you find in Ireland, no matter how it may affect you, swear to me that you will not leave your mount. Oshin promised. The next day, he mounted Neve's white steed and kissed her farewell. The immortal horse carried him back over wind and waves the way they'd come until they arrived on the green beaches of Ireland. He came upon a village, passing by men and women worn by age and toil, in strange, drab clothing unfamiliar to him. Where can I find Finn McCool and the Fian of Erin? he asked. Finn McCool, you say? The Fians of myth and legend? I couldn't tell you, my lord. If they ever lived, and no offense, perhaps they did, they would be some 300 years gone. Except, I suppose, for uh, Finn Sarushin, I heard a fairy princess stole him away to tear the No. No. Can this be true? Three hundred years? She raced his steed to the Hill of Allen, the home fortress where he'd been raised. He found it at last, a roofless ruin, overgrown with weeds. His father and all his friends and kin had been dead in the ground for generations. Bashim rode away, contemplating his father returning home. He came upon a crowd of men, dozens of them, 
struggling to roll aside a boulder blocking their plowing. They stopped and looked up at him, taller and mightier than any man they had ever seen, and begged him for assistance. But she gazed down at the puny men of this age, unable to move this simple obstacle, and agreed to help. He approached the boulder, but remembered his promise to Neve. He leaned down from the saddle, reaching one arm under the great stone. With a mighty heave, he sent it rolling harmlessly down the hill. But in that moment, Machine's saddle girth burst from the strain, and he fell to the earth. His immortal steed vanished into mist. The men stared at Machine again, for he was now transformed by 300 years of mortal time. They beheld an ancient, withered man, white bearded and blind. His beautiful raiment had become coarse woven rags, and he could not stand without their help. Who are you, old man? they asked. What doom has befallen you? I am Oshin, son of Finn, or I was. I am back from the land of youth, but everyone I hope to see is dead and gone. And my immortal wife shall grieve my loss forever, a blot of sadness on the land of joy. The men took him to the wisest person they knew, St. Patrick, who had brought the Christian church to Ireland. Patrick ensured that she was cared for and instructed his scribes to record each word of his adventures and his father and the Fians. Thus did she pass his final days, sharing everything he could remember of the wild, free lives of Ireland's heroes before he departed this life, to be reunited with them at long.